What up, y'all? It's Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mel, and you listen to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, February 28th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio. Dot com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Sandra Bullock, Dave Chappelle, and Nicole Kidman are among the third round of Hollywood stars announced as presenters for the 90th Annual Academy Awards on March 4th. Matthew McConaughey, Emily Blunt, Eugenia DeBrez, Ansel Elgert, Jane Fonda, Jodie Foster, Eriza Gonzalez, Ashley Judd, uh, Helen Mirren, Rita Moreno, Lupita Nyong'o, and Christopher Walken were also announced as presenters Wednesday on Twitter by the Academy. The group follows previous announcements of Marisha Shala Ali, Chadwick Bosman, Viola Davis, Laura Dern, Jennifer Gardner, Greta Gerwig, Tiffany Haddish, Tom Holland, Kamal Najani, Margot Roby, Emma Stone, uh, Daniela Vega, Army Hammer, Gal Gadot, Mark Camel, Oscar Isaac, Lin Manuel Miranda, Gina Rodriguez, Eva Marie Saint, Wes Studi, Kelly Marie Tran, and Zendaya as presenters during the prestigious event. The Oscars, which Jimmy Kimmel will host for the second year in a row, will air March 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. The romantic fantasy, The Shape of Water, from director Gamma the Toro, leads the field with 13 nominations, including Best Picture, Best Actress, and Best Director. Michael B. Jordan helps Michael Shannon censor and destroy knowledge by burning books in the first tra- teaser for HBO's upcoming film adaptation of Fahrenheit 451. The clip released Monday features Jordan as Guy Montage, a young fireman who struggles with his role as a book burner as he is being mentored by Shannon. Uh, Shannon says a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. News, facts, memoirs, internet of old burn it. We're not born equal, so we must be made equal by the fire. The trailer also features the futuristic and dystopian world the story takes place in. Jordan is seen visiting with children where he explains that no books will be left by the time they grow up. Based on the classic 1953 Ray Bradbury novel of the same name, Fahrenheit 451 from director Raman Brahrani is set to arrive on HBO in May. Sophia Butella, Lily Singh, Laura Hare, and Martin Donovan also star in the movie. Reese Witherspoon and her lookalike daughter dazzled on the red carpet Monday. The 41-year-old actress and 18-year-old daughter Ava Philippi attended the Los Angeles premiere of Witherspoon's movie A Wrinkle in Time at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. Witherspoon was all smiles in a sparkling floor-length red gown as she posed for photos with Ava. The teenager wore a simple black mini dress with strappy sandals. Witherspoon was also accompanied by her son Deacon Philippi, although the 14-year-old did not walk the red carpet. Witherspoon and Ava both shared photos photos and videos with Deacon on Instagram stories. The actress said in one clip before asking her kids, we're so excited to go see A Wrinkle in Time. What's A Wrinkle in Time? Ava and Deacon responded, a book. A Wrinkle in Time co-stars Oprah Winfrey, Mindy Calley, and Storm Reid and opens in theaters March 9th. The movie is based on the Madeline Liango novel of the same name, which both Ava and Deacon have read. Whisper told Entertainment Tonight at the premiere, they're really excited, they know everything, and I can't wait to hear what they think. Whisper shares Ava and Deacon with ex-husband Ryan Philippi and five-year-old son Tennessee with husband Jim Thoth. She can help a gush about Ava this month after enlisting her daughter to star in a new Draper James campaign. The star says, there's nothing like the love I have for my daughter. We share every emotion with each other, uh, other, our hopes and dreams. We can talk for hours. Gemma Chan has been cast in Marvel's upcoming first female lead superhero film starring Brie Larson, Captain Marvel. Chan joins the film as Min- Minerva, a Marvel comic character. A comics character who is a uh, geneticist from the Cree alien race and works as a spy, Deadline reported. Chan commented on her casting on Twitter saying, very excited to be joining the MCU, a reference to Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe. Larson responded to Chan's tweet saying, this is sisterhood is expanding, congratulations. Chan and Larson will be accompanied by Samuel L. Jackson reprising his Marvel role as Nick Fury, Jude Law, and Ben Mendelsohn as the film's villain. 
Captain Marvel from director duo, uh, directing duo Anne Bolden and Ryan Fleck with the script by Nicole Perlman takes place in the 90s before the events of Iron Man will kick off the Marvel Cinematic Universe in 2008. The superheroine obtains her superpowers after fusing with an alien. Marvel previously announced that Captain Marvel will be taking on a powerful alien race, the Scrolls, who are prominent figures in the pages of the Marvel comics. Chan is known for starring on AMC's Humans and will next be seen in the film adaptation of Crazy Rich Asians, followed by Mary Queen of Scots alongside Margot Robbie and Sarah Ronan. Captain Marvel is set to arrive in theaters on March 8, 2019. Filmmaker James Gunn has defended his Guardians of the Galaxy star Chris Pratt for sending prayers on Twitter to Kevin Smith after the director suffered a massive heart attack. Pratt was met with backlash from some com- uh, commentators on Twitter who noted that prayer would not be able to help Smith, similar to how social media users have told politicians that praying is not enough in the wake of mass shootings. Gunn said on Twitter as part of a long response discussing the matter, so I just read Chris Pratt's tweet to Kevin Smith saying he would pray for him and made the mistake of reading the comments, many of which go off on Chris for saying he'd pray. I think people misunderstand the backlash against thoughts and prayers. He continued by saying there's nothing wrong with sending someone positive thoughts and prayers, but when this is coped with inaction, when actions will benefit the situation, it's empty. If you're offering Parkland shooting survivors prayers, but are willing to deal with the problem of gun violence in this country in a practical way, those prayers are empty. He continued in reference to the recent mass shooting in Parkland, Florida High School. Uh, he also added, Gunn uh, said, but no one expects Chris Pratt to shoulder doctors out of the way and perform heart surgery on Kevin Smith, nor does Kevin need Chris to pay his medical bills. So I think his prayers are appreciated and about all he can do. Said before noting how prayer and meditation have helped him throughout his life and career. He also concluded by saying, if I'm ever sick, I will gratefully accept any of your thoughts and prayers and will not be as grateful for some random fan knocking down my doctor and performing his own brand of kick-ass surgery on me love to you all have a great week smith announced on monday that he was recovering in a hospital after suffering a massive heart attack after performing a new stand-up special kevin smith live at the alex theater in glendale california pratt said at the time kevin we don't know each other too good but i've loved you since clerks and i'm praying my ass off for you because i believe in the healing power of prayer can you please pray with me people Sarah Jessica Parker and Cynthia Nixon reunited Monday amid drama with the Sex and the City cast. Nixon posted a sweet photo with Parker on Instagram amid the 52-year-old actress's ongoing feud with their former co-star Kim Cattrall. The picture shows Nixon and Parker smiling as they post on the bench at at La Mama Experimental Theater Club in New York. Nixon wears a simple black dress with Parker in a gray shirt and jeans. Nixon captioned the snapshot, Old friends ran into each other at a T Magazine shoot today. Miss you at Sarah Jessica Parker. Nixon, Parker, Cottrell, and Kristen Davis co-starred in the HBO series Sex in the City and two Sex in the City films. Parker and Cottrell initially had tension in the fall after Cottrell turned down Sex in the City 3 and declared she was never friends with her co-stars. She said on Piers Morgan's Live Stories in October, We've never been friends. We've been colleagues. Parker and Cottrell's feud escalated this month following Cottrell's brother's death. Cottrell called out Parker in an Instagram post after the actress voiced her condolences on Instagram and commented in an interview. Cottrell wrote, let me make this very clear. If I haven't already, you are not my family. You are not my friend. So I'm writing to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. Cottrell had a much different reaction to Nixon's sympathies this month, Friday. Cynthia, hearing your voice meant so much to me. Thank you for reaching out. Love, Kim. Hashtag sex in the city. Kim Kardashian is giving fans a first glimpse of daughter Chicago West. The 37-year-old television personality shared a cute picture using a bare Snapchat filter Monday after welcoming Chicago with husband Kanye West in January. The photo shows Kardashian voguing for the camera as she snaps a selfie with her baby girl. The filter gives mom and daughter fuzzy pink ears, shiny eyes, and a pink nose. She captioned the picture, Baby Chicago, which has received over 6.1 million likes on Instagram as of Tuesday morning. Kardashian West welcomed Chicago via surrogate on January 15th. The reality star said in a tweet Saturday that Chicago looks a tiny bit like her other two children, four-year-old daughter North and two-year-old son Saint. Uh, she wrote, Chicago is the sweetest, best baby. She looks a tiny bit like North and a tiny bit like Saint, but definitely her own persona. 
Uh, Kardashian said Saturday at the Create and Cultivate event in Los Angeles that she stays present as a mom by ignoring her phone when she is with her kids. She says, one of the rules I have about being present with my kids is I don't have my phone when I'm with them. So like story time at night in the mornings getting ready, I just don't have my phone. The star explained, I want my kids to see the separation, to feel the difference, and know that there is a time and place for that. So I'm really cautious when I'm at home with my phones and just being super present. Jennifer Lawrence says she still loves former flame Darren Aronofsky. The 27-year-old actress discussed her lingering feelings on for Aronofsky on Monday's episode of WTF with Mark Maron podcast following her split from the 49-year-old director in October. She told host Mark Maron, I was in love with him for two years. I still love him very much. Lawrence and Aronofsky started dating after collaborating on the director's film Mother, which opened in September. Lawrence said she was immediately attracted to Aronofsky when he first pitched her the movie. The star recalled, he flew in, pitched me, left. The whole thing was probably an hour and a half, and then I was like, he's hot. Uh, she said, I remember I was holding my dog and I shut the door and when the door shut, I went, Pippi, that's called sexual tension. He played hard to get for like nine months, maybe longer, which just killed me. Lawrence said she's friends with most of her exes, including Evernovsky and Nicholas Holt. Lawrence and Evernovsky were all smiles during an outing with the actress's dog Pippi in New York in December. A source told E! News at the time they are friends. They are not officially back together, but are spending time together again. An insider added, they never stop speaking after they broke up. They care about each other. They're just seeing what happens. Lawrence will next star in the movie Red Sparrow, which opens in theaters Friday, March 2nd. Amy Schumer says she's so in love with husband Chris Fisher. The 36-year-old actress and comedian discussed her romance with Fisher on Monday's episode of You Up with Nikki Glaser podcast after marrying the chef this month after a few months of dating. She said part of the thing that's good about us getting married so quickly is that we're so in love. Every girl I know, if they're getting proposed to, they're like, oh, now, now that I can't have kids. Schumer says it feels... Uh, good to have wed with Fisher and be able to call him a husband, her husband. The star said, I'm a wife as hell, but it's still like a novelty. Somebody went to sit next to Chris and he's like, my wife is sitting here. And then I got back and he was excited to tell me that he said that. Uh, she added, I just have been really overusing it to a degree that's insane, like when it's completely uncalled for. Schumer and Fisher tied the knot February 13th in a secret ceremony in Malibu, California. The actors shared a uh, slideshows of photos on February 17th from the reception, which included pictures with her sister Kim Carmel. The, she wrote, thanks for always being uh, for always being with me and have a celebration Chardonnay when something big happens. Thanks for loving me and Chris. Uh, Schumer and Fisher were first linked in November following the actress to split from Ben Hanish. The actress will next star in the movie I Feel Pretty, which opens in theaters April 27th. Fifty Shades Freed actor Brant Doherty is engaged to be married. The 32-year-old actor said in an Instagram post Monday that he proposed to actress Kimberly Hedek Hildago during a trip to Amsterdam this month. Uh, he wrote, So we have some exciting news to share with everyone. A few weeks ago, at Kim Hildago and I visited Amsterdam and I asked her to marry me. Most importantly, she said yes. Now she's stuck with me forever. Sucker. Hildago, who has appeared on How I Met Your Mother, Bones, and Grey's Anatomy, also shared the news on her own account. She captioned a photo with Doherty, adding a smiley face and engagement ring emoji. Okay, at Brent Doherty, I'll marry you. Darty has said in a previous post that he and Hidalgo visited Amsterdam for Valentine's Day. Hidalgo captured a picture of Darty taking in the view from the NH Collection Dolian Hotel that the actor shared February 15th on Instagram. He wrote, so mesmerized by this view at NH Collection Dolian, hashtag NH Collection Dolian, at Kim Hidalgo. Darty played Luke Sawyer in Fifty Shades Free, which opened in theaters this month. He is also known for portraying Noel Kahn on Pretty Little Liars and Brian on Days of Our Lives. Pat Oswalt is celebrating the release of his late wife's final book. The 49-year-old actor and comedian praised Michelle McNamara in a tweet Tuesday after aiding in the posthumous publication of her book, 
I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Oswald marked the occasion by bringing a copy of McNamara's book to her grave. McNamara died at the age of 46 in April 2016 from an undiagnosed heart condition and complications from prescribed medication. Oswald wrote, You did it, baby. The book is excellent. The writing is brilliant. You tried to bring kindness to chaos, which was your way. Hashtag I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Hashtag Michelle McNamara. Oswald said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly published Monday that he became committed to finishing McNamara's book after her death. The book is an investigative piece on the Golden State Killer. The comedian said, I wish I could tell you some moments of epiphany when I realized that I was going to finish it, but I don't have it. That whole year is just this really painful birth. He added, it was her book and an amazing book. I wanted to do it right by her. Oswald and McNamara were married more than 10 years and shared eight-year-old daughter Alice. The actor got remarried to Meredith Salinger in July. Former Married at First Sight star Nick Pendergrass is giving fans a first glimpse of his infant twins. The television personality took to Instagram on Monday after girlfriend Heather Yearid gave birth to daughter Layla Ray and son Logan Joseph in December. He captioned a photo with his family. Our beautiful twins Layla Ray and Logan Joseph arrived on December 10th and we couldn't be more tired and happy. Entertainment Tonight report Layla and Logan spent 47 days in the neonatal intensive care unit after arriving two months early. Pentagast said in his post that he kept the news quiet until the pair were healthy. He explained, It was hard keeping this in the dark for so long. The birth of our twins was something we chose not to share with everyone until they came home from the NICU happy and healthy. I appreciate my friends and family for supporting me through this experience. Pentagast and Yared couldn't help but gush about their daughter and son in a statement to People magazine. The couple said, we're in awe of the twins. This entire experience has been surreal. If you would have asked either of us if this is what we thought life would look like in a year, we would have laughed. Pencil Guys came to fame on season four of Married at First Sight. He started dating Yurid following his split in January 2017 from wife Sonia Grando- uh, Grandados, who he met on the Lifetime series. Kaylin Lowell's miscarriage was confirmed on Monday's episode of Team Mom OG. The 25-year-old television personality broke down on the MTV series after losing her unborn third child with husband Tyler Balateria. Rumors of Lowell's miscarriage had first surfaced in January. Uh, she said on the show, I feel like maybe it just wasn't the right time. Thank God for kids and husbands. If they weren't around, I probably would have offed myself. Seriously, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Lowell said in a phone call with Balateria that she was struggling with anxiety in the wake of the ordeal. She says, you'd be super proud of me today. I've liked the anxiety and I've been working through it. I just keep talking to myself saying, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're strong, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're strong. Balateria responded, that's good, honey, because you are beautiful and smart and strong. You are. You really are, honey. Lowell sought help in December after experiencing suicidal thoughts after her miscarriage. She checked into a treatment facility again in January for, quote, childhood trauma and returned home Monday after completing her program. The star captioned a photo on Instagram with Balateria, finally home, and it feels so good. Lowell and Balateria share a three-year-old daughter, Novali, and are also parents of daughter Carly, whom they placed for adoption as teenagers. The couple came to fame on 16 and Pregnant before starring on Team Mom. Stacey Dash filed paperwork Monday to run for Congress in the California's 44th District. The 51-year-old actress, best known for her role in the 1995 hit comedy Clueless, has been a popular conservative commentator over the past few years and will run as a Republican in the heavily Democratic District South of Los Angeles is currently represented by Democratic Nellette Brannigan. The district voted for Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump 83% to 12%. However, since teasing a run on February 9th, Dash has tweeted criticisms of the Republican Party, including Education Security, uh, excuse me, Education Secretary Betty DeVos and President Donald Trump and its response to gun violence. Dash tweeted on February 15th, we have a billion a billionaire secretary of education who's against public schools. We even have a president whose children did not go to public schools. And there are cries from the federal government to fix this shooting problem. So far, Dash is the only Republican candidate in the primary for the 44th District. Monday night, Dash tweeted that a formal announcement is coming. She wrote, for those mocking for the district I live in, open your minds. It's time, too, for me to put up or shut up, and I want to serve great people. Katy Perry gave a surprise performance for first responders and survivors in January's deadly mudslide in Monticello, California, during a benefit concert. Perry, a native of nearby Galetta, performed hits including Roar and Fireworks at Sunday's 1A05 kick-ass 
Bash fundraiser at the Bella Vista Polo Club in Summerlin, California. More than 2,000 people attended the concert, People Magazine reported. The fundraiser was named after the area code that was devastated by the mudslide, which killed more than dozens of people. Perry told CNN, this meant the world to me. This is where I flourish. My heart was broken by the tragedy, the mudslide. I'll do anything to help this community. The benefit concerts lineup also included Catherine McPhee, David Foster, Dishwala, Wilson Phillips, and Ellen DeGeneres. The event raised $2 million for survival relief, emergency services, and equipment. DeGeneres says the news has moved on, but we have not moved on. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1964, Thelonious Monk makes the cover of Time magazine. Beatlemania was at its peak in the winter of 1964, but not every music fan had the Beatles' brand of rock and roll on their turntables. In fact, it was jazz music, vital and uh, innovative contemporary jazz music, that captured the imagination of a significant proportion of American music fans in 1964. And no jazz musician at the time was more vital, innovative, and contemporary than Thelonious Monk. So important was jazz in the, um, the American cultural scene, and so important was Monk in the world of jazz that his portrait was graced on the cover of Time magazine on this date in 1964. The piece inside the magazine called The Loneliest Monk by writer Barry Farrell gave Thelonious the credit he deserved for helping bring jazz out of the swing era. Farrell wrote of Monk's legendary tenure at the resident piano pl- as the resident piano player at Milton's Playhouse in New York City in the 1940s. Uh, Monk presided at the birth of Pac. Rhythm scrambled forward at his touch. The ubiquitous boldness of his harmonies forced the horn players into flights like the which have never been heard before. But when Bob drifted out of Harlem and into wider popularity after the war, Monk was already embarked on his long and lonely scuffle. The long and lonely scuffle was Farrell's way not only to characterize the iconoclastic musical path that Monk would follow through the 1950s, but also alluding to Monk's well-known eccentricity, which his loved ones knew to be a long but unnamed mental illness. In the brilliant Clint Eastwood pro- uh, produced documentary, The Loneliest Monk, Strain, Strain, No Chaser, Monk's manager, Henry Comboy, recalled that the first interview with Farrell coincided with the start of one of Monk's episodes of Strange Behaviors. Uh, he says, by the time he got downstairs with me, he was already he was already off somewhere. I don't recall him being hospitalized for it until the mid to early 60s, his son Thelonious Monk Jr.'s recall. But my mom, she would tell me that she saw the signs of it much, much earlier. For his part, Monk made light of the issue to Farrell, even joking about an incident in which he was briefly hospitalized after being found wandering alone and speaking incoherently. He says, I can't be crazy because they had me in one of those places and they let me go. Monk, composer of such jazz standards as Round Midnight, Blue Monk, and Well You Needed, continued to perform and pursue a truly unique direction in jazz until his death on February 17, 1982. Also on this date in 1983, the final episode of MASH airs. The celebrated sitcom MASH bowed out after 11 seasons, airing a special two-and-a-half-hour episode watched by 77% of the television viewing audience. It was the largest percentage ever to watch a single TV show up to that time. Set in near Seoul, Korea, behind the American front lines known uh, during the Korean War, MASH was based on the 1968 novel by Richard Hooker and the 1970 film produced by 20th Century Fox and directed by Robert Altman. Its title came from the initials for the Mobile Arming Surgical Hospital, an isolated compound that recovered uh, recover, received wounded soldiers and was staffed by the show's cast of doctors and nurses. At the heart of matches were the surgeons Dr. Benjamin Franklin High Pierce, Hawkeye Pierce, played by Alan Alda, and Dr. Tra- Trapper John McIntyre, played by Wayne Rogers. These roles were played in the Altman movie by Donald Sutherland and Elliot Gould, respectfully. Hawkeye and Trapper's foils on the TV show were Dr. Frank Burns, played by Larry Linville, and senior nurse major Margaret Hotlips Houlihan by Laura Slitt, who disapprove of the surgeon's boozing, womanizing, and disregards for military authority. Other key characters in the series were the bumbling camp commander, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake, played by McLean Stevenson, and his clerk and right-hand man, Corporate Walter Radar O'Reilly, played by Gary Burdoff. MASH premiered on CBS 
television network in September 1972. On the threat of cancellation during its first season because of low ratings, the show turned things around the following year, landing in the top 10 in the ratings and never dropped out of the top 20 for the rest of its run. While the show began as a thinly veal critique of the Vietnam War, it focused the switch to more character-driven plot lines after that war's anticlimactic end, allowing the series to continue to hold the public's attention as it's developed. In the middle of the show's tenure, Alda began to take more and more creative control, co-writing 13 episodes and directing more than 30, including the series finale. Alda became the first person to ever win the Emmy Awards for acting, directing, and writing the same show. Elements such as long-range and tracking camera shots, as well as sophisticated editing techniques, distinguish Mash from more than uh, from more traditional TV sitcoms. From the beginning, the influence of Altman's movie was evident in the cinematic nature of the show's camera work. In addition, each half-hour episode of Mash contained a signature mixture of dramatic and comedic plot lines, and its success sparked the rise of a new genre in TV shows dubbed dramedy. After earning consistent high ratings throughout its 11-year run, MASH enjoyed enduring popularity in the following decades, and it became one of the world's most syndicated shows. After spawning an unsuccess- uh, it also spawned an unsuccessful spinoff after MASH, which CBS aired from 1983 to 1985. And as your entertainment report for Wednesday, February 28, 2018, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.